When working with mockups and other designs, you may need to distort and warp raster layers rather than vector layers. For vector content, you have the warp group functionality. But when working with placed documents, images, and pixel layers, it is better to use explicit raster transform filters. I'll show you workflow examples for both the perspective and mesh warp filters. First, I'll place my content into this mockup document. I'll go out to the file browser and drag drop this affinity branding designer document onto my mockup document to place it as an additional layer. It needs scaling down dramatically. Rather than having to zoom out to achieve this, I can instead click here on the context toolbar and bring the scale down. I can also click original size, which will scale the layer down to 100% relative to the document DPI. I'll scale it down further until it roughly matches the size of the area I want to perspective transform it onto. Now I'll move across to the pixel persona. And this will give me access to the Live Perspective Filter from the Layer menu. I'll go to New Live Filter Layer, Perspective, to add it to my placed layer. I can reposition the four corner nodes until the design matches the perspective of the surface. Then I can close the dialog by pressing the Escape key. If the aspect ratio of the design does not quite match the background surface, a quick technique is to scale the design non-proportionally. I'll select the placed document layer, then I'll start click-dragging on the right-hand node, using Command on Mac, Control on Windows, to scale around the center of the layer, and I'll release the mouse button to commit the transformation. Remember, all layer transformations are non-destructive in the Affinity apps, so you don't have to worry about losing resolution or image quality when manipulating content like this. As a result of the scaling, the perspective transform may need a slight adjustment. To change the perspective transform, I can click on the thumbnail icon. The dialog will reappear along with the transform controls. I'll make some slight adjustments. Then use Escape once again to close the dialog. When performing this kind of mock up workflow, I would recommend placing designs using the native Affinity Designer document format so you can take advantage of artboards. I'll select the placed designer document layer, and on the context toolbar, you will see an artboard drop down option. This will allow me to switch to another artboard within the placed designer document instantly changing what is displayed. Placed native Affinity files will also allow you to quickly jump in and edit their contents with the Edit Document button, so I can quickly make any changes to the source file if required. This technique also works with PDF files that have spreads or pages. For example, I'll choose Replace Document and replace this design with a PDF version. The artboard option will now change to display the three pages available in the PDF, and I can still move between them non-destructively. Now I'll show you how the live mesh warp filter works. Within my main design artboard, I want to place my magazine front page image underneath the hand and shadow composite layers. So I'll make sure I have the background layer beneath them selected. Now I'll drag drop this magazine cover PNG file onto the document to place it and scale it down. As with the Live Perspective filter, I first need to move into the Pixel Persona to access the Live Mesh Warp filter. Then I'll go to Layer, New Live Filter Layer, Mesh Warp. First, I'll do some rough positioning of the four corner nodes. Then I'll fine tune the node positioning and curvature. I'll click drag the right hand line just below the middle until the curvature between the top and bottom nodes matches the page curl of the magazine. The bottom area requires a slightly more complex solution. I'll click drag this curvature handle here and bring it down. But there is no way between these two nodes to produce a curvature that would cover the bottom line of the magazine adequately. So I need to add another node to the mesh warp grid. I'll double-click near the thumb 
on the bottom line to add a node, then move it up. And I'll add another node just by the start of the index finger here. I'll then experiment with the two curvature handles until I manage to roughly match up the mesh warp lines with the magazine line. At this point, the Hide Mesh button on the Context Toolbar becomes very useful because it allows me to temporarily hide the lines and node points so I can see the result underneath. Decompositing is not quite perfect, so it's now just a case of modifying the nodes and curvature handles in small increments until the result looks seamless. I can quickly switch away from the Mesh Warp settings using H, which toggles to the View tool. This is also another method of hiding the lines and node points. If more editing is required, I can then click on the Mesh Warp thumbnail to bring the Mesh Grid back up and manipulate it further until I am happy with the result. And finally, if I wanted to replace the image, I would first select the Placed Image layer, then switch to the Move tool using V. On the Context toolbar, I can now click the Replace Image button. Then I can navigate to and select a replacement image and click Open. And there we go. That was a look at how to use the Live Perspective and Mesh Warp filters in Affinity Designer. Thank you for watching.